Hi there, I'm Shannon Knight. And I'm Natalo Mashalela. And we're economists from Genesis Analytics, a consulting company with its headquarters in Johannesburg. We're delighted to present to you and show you how to use the Excel-based SSEG financial impact model we developed on behalf of GIZ and Salga. The purpose of the model is to assist municipalities in their design of SSEG tariffs. The model uses inputs as provided by the user to test the impact of a given set of SSEG tariffs for a certain group of users on municipal finances. In other words, once SSEG tariffs are introduced, what happens to a municipality's revenue and what happens to its costs. At the same time, the model shows the user how attractive those particular SSEG tariffs are to customers who are deciding whether or not to install rooftop PV. This will help you, the user, to design win-win SSEG tariffs where the impact on the municipality is tolerable and there is a business case for the customer who wishes to install rooftop PV. As mentioned, in order to use the model, you require a number of simple data inputs. Existing municipal tariffs. These are the tariffs that customers will migrate from to the new SSEG tariff. Bulk power purchase tariffs from Eskom. The size and cost of the solar PV installation. The number of customers on the municipal tariff and the electricity sales to these customers. Technical losses and proposed SSEG tariffs. The model has been designed so that the data requirements are not too onerous. These are the minimum data requirements, but some other inputs can also be customized if the data is available. We have recorded three short videos that will help familiarize you with the model. This is the first video and is an introduction to the model. Video two covers how to input data and how to read the results. And video three covers SSEG tariff design and how the model can assist in this regard. We advise you to watch all three videos and to consult the user guide, which looks like this, before you use the model. Before we look at the actual model, I'd like to take you through a number of slides to introduce the model and provide some context. The model has taken a couple of years to develop and has been through a number of iterations. We are grateful to individuals from the following companies that provided assistance to us during the development of the model. It is important to have a common understanding of what a grid-tied feed-in solar PV system looks like, and this illustration shows the setup well. Grid-tied feed-in PV systems have PV panels that are connected directly to an inverter. The electricity it generates is used locally on the property or fed back into the electricity grid when excess electricity is generated. This model was developed at an interesting time in South Africa's electricity supply industry history, and this context shaped the development of the model. This slide explains the electricity supply issues in South Africa, which were accompanied by increases in electricity tariffs. At the same time, solar PV prices were falling, which is shown on the chart. As a result of tariff increases and solar PV price decreases, more and more electricity customers are choosing to install solar PV with and without official approval. In addition, there is interest in feeding ele excess electricity back onto the grid. It is important for municipalities to manage these parallel connections to ensure the safety of staff, customers and the public, as well as to ensure the quality of electricity. In terms of the global context, this chart further illustrates the decline in solar PV prices and shows how global solar PV capacity has grown exponentially since 2005. Note also how the great part of the bar, which is annual additions, is growing bigger every year. So what exactly is this tool and what can it do? It is an Excel-based tool that calculates how municipal revenue is impacted by customers who choose to install rooftop PV. At the same time, it looks at the business case for customers that install solar PV under a given set of SSEG tariffs. 
The purpose of the model is to assist municipalities in designing tariffs that balance municipal revenue requirements with customer expectations for solar PV investment returns. The model was developed with a number of stringent requirements in mind. It had to be generic, simple and easy to use, with data requirements that weren't too onerous. Plus, it couldn't contain macros. What can the model do? The model can generate the reduction in municipal revenue and value of solar for a given set of SSEG tariffs and determine if a business case exists for that set of tariffs for the customer. In order to assist with tariff design, the user can then change the SSEG tariffs, analyze the new set of results, and then compare results for different tariffs to design the best set of tariffs. The model does not generate the best set of tariffs, and it is up to the user to use the tool to design their best set. Please note that the model is indicative of what will happen to municipal finances and the business case under different tariff scenarios. It is indicative because the model uses a generic customer that consumes electricity according to a particular load profile and generates electricity from solar PV according to historical irradiation patterns. But in reality, every customer behaves differently, so the results generated by the model need to be treated as such. However, as already discussed, the results from the model can guide a municipality's tariff setting process and the testing of alternative SSEG tariffs is very useful in the tariff setting process. In conclusion, we want to stress that additional work and analysis required to determine tariffs that fulfill each individual municipality's requirements. The next five slides show what happens to a consumer's load profile once they install solar PV panels. This slide shows a house without rooftop PV. And this slide shows a typical consumption profile for such a dwelling. The chart shows electricity consumption over a 24-hour period for a typical day in summer. The morning and evening peaks are evident, as well as mid-morning and midday peaks, which may be from appliances, the pool pump, etc. Note now that this house has installed rooftop PV. And this chart now shows the original consumption profile, which is the blue line, the solar PV output, which is the red line, and the resulting demand, which is the gray line. Where resulting demand is negative, this means that production of electricity exceeds supply and that the customer will want to export that electricity back onto the grid. Where demand is positive, the customer will import electricity from the grid to supplement their own generation. This next chart is an extension of the previous chart and shows the various components of the revenue impact calculations after the introduction of the SSEG tariff. The area between the grey and blue lines show the reduced electricity sales for the municipality as demand for electricity from the grid falls. At the same time though, the municipality needs to purchase less power from Eskom and thus, this is a cost saving. The space between the red line and the blue line shows the electricity exported by the customer onto the grid, which needs to be purchased by the municipality. There is a loss to the municipality as it needs to pay for the electricity. However, there is also a gain if it pays less than the Eskom purchase price for this power. The box in the chart highlights the elements that need to be considered when calculating the revenue impact on municipalities. These are time of use tariffs, the megaflex rates, the solar PV output and the reduction in technical losses. Note that the introduction of solar PV shouldn't affect the demand charges paid by customers to the municipality. This is based on the assumption that in every month there will be at least one cloudy day and thus maximum demand won't change as a result of the installation of rooftop PV. I will now define SSEG tariffs. We'll start by looking at the difference between a standard consumption tariff and an SSEG tariff. This slide illustrates the elements that make up a standard consumption tariff, which include the following. The network cost, 
That includes the costs associated with operating and maintaining the network. The service charge, that includes the costs associated with providing a retail service network, for example, metering and billing and the energy charge that covers the total cost of electricity from ESCOM plus a margin. Now we look at the elements that make up an SSEG tariff. As you can see, an SSEG tariff includes the same elements as a standard consumption tariff with the addition of an export tariff. An export tariff is a payment made to a customer for every kilowatt hour of surplus electricity a customer's solar PV system exports to the grid. There are no universally accepted definitions of the many types of SSEG tariffs that exist. Some examples include net metering tariffs, net billing tariffs, net feed-in tariffs, and gross feed-in tariffs. Here are two examples of how SSEG tariffs can be defined in the model, net billing and net feed-in tariffs. For a net billing tariff, customers with SSEG receive credits for excess electricity exported to the grid. Consumption costs and export credits are offset against each other for each time of use period. The monthly balance is rolled over from month to month so that if exports exceed imports in a particular month, that benefit is shifted to the next month. At the end of the year, the variable component of the bill equals the sum of the three time of use periods. If the total is negative, it is set equal to zero in calculating the total bill and the export tariff increases over time. For a net feed-in tariff, the same calculation is done, but payments can be made from the municipality to the customer if exports exceed imports. In other words, the variable component of the bill is not set equal to zero in calculating the bill. Also, a net feed-in tariff scheme typically guarantees SSEG customers specified payments per unit over a fixed period, normally around 20 years, meaning the export tariff is fixed for a 20-year period. So far, most municipalities with SSEG tariffs have adopted a net billing approach. Let's now take a brief look at how installing solar PV and changing to an SSEG tariff will affect an individual's electricity bill. This slide shows demand for a typical household on a summer's day. You can see the early morning peak between 5 and 6 a.m., then additional peaks at 10 a.m. and noon, and at the end of the day there is the biggest peak. The peak between 5 and 6 will be because of the lights coming on, water being heated and cooking, at 10, it will be because of water heating, between 12 and 2 because of cooking and the pool pump, and the evening peak is due to water heating, cooking, and general appliances. This slide shows what happens to demand after the introduction of SSEG. Household original demand is still represented by the blue line, but now, because of electricity generated by solar PV, demand from the municipality falls. The red line shows electricity produced from solar PV and the grey line shows resulting household demand. Where demand is negative, electricity is fed onto the grid. Before solar PV, this household's bill is 899 Rand, which is a flat rate of 1 Rand 54 multiplied by their consumption of 582 kilowatt hours per month. The relevant tariff is an inclining block tariff and the average rate of 1 Rand 54 was calculated using the model. Now, if the household installs solar PV and there are no SSEG tariffs in place, in other words, net metering, the default situation is that the meter spins backwards when electricity is exported onto the grid, and the household is compensated for that electricity at an average rate of 1 Rand 54. In this situation, the municipality would incur a loss of 288 Rand from that customer. 
The first method of protecting municipal revenue is for a bi-directional meter to be installed, which is highlighted by the dashed box on the slide. This slide shows the financial impact of the change in the household load post the installation of a solar PV system. The gap between the blue and the grey lines constitutes lost sales to the municipality, as well as reduced purchases by the municipality from Eskom. The gap between the red and the blue line represents the compensation to the customer from the municipality for exporting electricity, as well as the additional electricity that is now available for the municipality to resell to other customers. So you can see that there are both losses and gains to the municipality. The municipality has a number of options to protect its revenue from SSCG customers. The first is to compensate the PV customer at a rate lower than retail. This is to ensure that the customer registers their system with the municipality and still benefits from being connected to the grid and does not explore off-grid options. This rate still needs to be fair and here the municipality has full control and can define a purchasing price for the buying of this electricity. This represents a business opportunity to the municipality and if this rate is lower than the Eskom Megaflex then there is a definite gain for the municipality. The second option is for the municipality to introduce other, for example, fixed or demand-based charges to recover parts of the losses incurred by reduced sales to this customer. This slide looks at two examples of what the customer's bill could look like after the introduction of SSEG tariffs. In the first bill, an export tariff, which is lower than the import tariff, is introduced. The overall impact of the municipality, after taking into account their cost savings as well, is a loss of 41 Rand. In contrast, if they introduce a fixed charge of 200 Rand per month, they make an overall gain of 158 Rand per month from this customer. These are two extreme examples and the ideal tariff is likely to lie somewhere in the middle of these two extremes. So in conclusion, First, and most importantly, for municipal revenue protection, is establishing a sound application and registration process for PV rooftop systems and installing adequate me metering to capture PV feed-in, especially so for residential customers. Then, it may be necessary to revisit the current tariff structure for different customer groups. A cost of supply study will help to determine the value of PV electricity and also to identify potential feed-in tariff levels. And remember that when designing SSEG tariffs, it is important to think of the solar PV customer business case and of the customer's investment expectation. Finally, as already discussed earlier in this video, different measures exist to reform the charging basis. The main menu contains links to the various sheets in the model. Clicking on the user instructions link, for example, takes you to the user instructions sheet. Please read through the user instructions before using the model. The user instructions contain brief descriptions of the following. The financial impact and business case models, customer classification, the various workbook sheets, the model assumptions, the data requirements, the workbook labels, and cell formats. As you can see, there are five sets of color-coded workbook tabs in the model. The black tabs contain the main menu and user instructions. The green tabs contain the standard and advanced model input sheets. All model inputs should be entered in the standard model inputs sheet to generate the results of the model. A user has the option of entering their own customer load profiles, tariff escalation percentages, and business case assumptions. These inputs should be entered in the advanced model inputs sheet, but these are not necessary inputs as the model uses generic inputs if these are not available. The blue tabs contain the results sheets, which include the printable report, financial impact model results, and business case results. 
The printable report is formatted for ease of printing and presents results of a particular SSEG tariff scenario entered by the user. The financial impact model results contain detailed results of the impact of SSEG tariffs on municipal revenues for a particular SSEG tariff scenario. This sheet is not formatted for printing. And the business case results contain detailed results of the business case for customers who have installed solar PV systems based on the proposed SSEG tariffs. This sheet is also not formatted for printing. The grey tabs contain the reference data, which include the following sheets. The map, which is a visual representation of the solar radiation data. Solar PV output. This sheet shows the irradiation data used to calculate PV generation for various geographic areas. And customer load usage profiles. This sheet contains the customized, if applicable, and generic load usage profiles of the different types of customers. The light green tabs contain the model calculations, which include the following sheets. Revenue from SSCG customers. This sheet calculates revenue from SSCG customers after the introduction of SSCG tariffs by the municipality. The revenue from other customers sheet calculates original revenue prior to the introduction of SSCG tariffs and revenue from non-SSCG customers after the introduction of the SSCG tariff. The value of solar sheet VOS calculates the three elements that make up the value of solar to the municipality, which include the reduction in bulk power purchases, the reduction in technical losses, and the extra margin from on-selling exported electricity to other customers. The average tariff calc sheet contains the average tariff calculation for municipal tariffs prior to the introduction of SSEG tariffs if the inclining block tariff is selected. The production and consumption sheet calculates PV production, electricity consumption, electricity balances, imports, exports, and self-consumption for a single customer in each category per half hour for the whole year. The NPV calculations sheet contains the net present value calculations used in the business case component of the model. And lastly, the PV production for 25 years sheet contains the calculations for determining the annual savings accrued by the solar PV customer over the lifespan of the solar PV system. This is also part of the business case. Accompanying the SSCG financial impact model are the model guidelines. Please refer to the model guidelines for a detailed explanation of each sheet and a background to the calculations. This brings us to the end of video one. Thank you for watching.